Welcome. Uh, and I think we can move to the next uh, presentation. And thank you, Oliver. And uh, that will be uh, our second speaker, Daniela uh, Cioplian, uh, who will discuss management of consecutive exotropia. And uh, uh, Daniela is uh, uh, one of the uh, more famous uh, strabismologists uh, in uh, her country, in uh, Romania. Mm -hmm. And we know each other for uh, a long, long time, 25 years now. I think in Jerusalem was the first time that we uh, met during an ESA meeting. So Daniela, uh, please go ahead uh, with the management of consecutive exotropia. Hello, dear colleagues. I'm Daniela Troplan from Romania, and I'm gonna talk on the management of consecutive exotropia. Thank you for the invitation. I have no financial interest to disclose in this presentation. Consecutive exotropia is the exotropia resulting early or late after 34 isotropia. There are different causes for this as overcorrection, mechanical causes, and unknown causes, which produce the exoshift long time after good alignment among the lifespan. Early overcorrection is not unusual and it can, it can happen because of several human errors as angle overestimation, incomplete or insufficient refraction assessment, pre-op deviation measurements, errors or undiagnosed abnormal ACA ratio. There are also predisposing factors for CXT onset as high hyperopia, high amblyopia, even treated, lack of fusion or accommodation and constitutional factors as prematurity or associated neurological disorders. If an overcorrection under 15 priest diopters is present with good A deduction and the patient has a low hyperopia, decrease the glossy spherical correction only if visual acuity is not affected. Botulinum toxin in the lateral rectus muscle can be an alternative. If the patient is binocular, just wait and follow and even exophoria is present. In myopic or emetropic patients, over minus lenses or prism can be used for preserving fusion. If decompensates or the patient refuses conservative treatment, reoperate. Treat it as primary XT only if the medial rectus muscle looks and works normally, but attention to nomograms, we deal with previously operated muscles. If two months post-op the deviation is larger than 15 pistols, consider reoperation. If normal A deduction is present on and the medial rectus muscle looks normal intraoperatively, depending on the deviation quantity, we can operate one or two muscles, advancing the medial rectus or recti and or recessing the lateral rectus muscle, or again, we can try botulinum toxin. If limited A deduction is observed, abnormal attachment to the sclera of the medial rectus muscle or disinserted medial rectus muscle should be suspected. The mechanical causes of CXT are abnormal attachments to the sclera of the medial rectus muscle as stress scar or slip muscle, absent attachment of the medial rectus muscle, meaning lost muscle or disinserted muscle, and restricted lateral rectus muscle consecutive to vicious scarring of the muscle and conjunctiva. Several types of abnormal attachments to the sclera following to medial rectus muscle surgery for isotropia have been identified. Medial rectus muscle stretch scar, slipped medial rectus muscle, and two particular types of attachments are medial rectus tenotomy and after medial rectus muscle scleral elongation, as you can observe in this picture. In one of our retrospective studies, we found that about 84% of the CXT cases with abnormal attachments of the medial rectus muscle to the sclera have been either slip muscles or stretch scar cases. Few examples of stretch scar. The length of the scar is usually small, the deduction is good to fair, and this is the result of abnormal healing of the muscle attachment. The main cause of the abnormal healing is the reparation collagen poor quality. Abnormal healing of the wound was observed in all types of surgery, but in strabismus surgery is usually found in all operated nerves. In the management of CXT due to stress scar of the medial rectus muscle, Ludwig and her co-author suggest the stretch scar resection 
and propose a formula for finding the new target insertion, which is named T, of the medial rectus muscle by calculating the sum between the distance from the original position uh, and the place where the medial rectus muscle was found in the length of the stretch scar, and then subtracting the recommended amount of further resection found in the nomograms. The non-absorbable sutures and supplementary securing lock are necessary for the new muscle insertion in order to avoid reoccurrence. In our cases, the stress scar length was less than six millimeters in all cases, and the resected amount was the equivalent of the medial rectus muscle resection from the nomogram augmented by approximately, it's just, just a suggestion, 10% more or less. The idea, is, the idea is that we have to reject the, and advance a little bit more when we deal with stress scar muscle than in the case of a normal muscle. We currently use a resorbable 6-0 suture reinforced by 5-0 nylon suture trying to avoid a new stress scar and CXT reoccurrence. The slippage, another type of uh, abnormal attachment, the slippage of the medial rectus muscle can happen in the next days after or week or surgery and usually is accompanied by a slight to severe limitation of the A deduction in the field of action of the affected muscle. The slippage is defined as the retraction of the muscle posteriorly within, within its capsule, only the capsule remaining attached to the sclera. There are few intra-op tests which can help us to diagnose the slip muscle. A positive spring back test, we can see the hook through the, mass, the, to the, uh, through the capsule, meaning a positive see-through test. And we can feel the denivelation between the capsule and the muscle by passing a small hook underneath the muscle. This is the positive step test. The slippage causes are usually inappropriate surgical techniques. The muscle look uh, lock too close to the insertion or too superficial without securing, muscu securing muscular fibers, inadequate needle instruments or suture, but mostly inadequate passage of the needle into the sclera or muscle, too short or too superficial. Of course, there are also favorizing factors for slippage as the muscle contractor or stiffness, concomitant strengthening of the antagonist, restriction on the antagonist, previous multiple surgery on the muscle or orbital restriction. During the surgery after medial rectus isolation, the pseudotendon identification, the needle should be inserted into the muscle behind the pseudotendon limit. It is mandatory to secure the middle fibers by a knot and to pass the wire through the two halves of the muscle and secure to secure by knots all the fibers. The pseudotendon has to be resected. The muscle will be, will be reattached to the sclera, avoiding to reinsert it too close to the limbus. Add another muscle surgery if the deviation is larger than 20 prism diode. This is a case of CXT with bilateral medial rectus slippage and only two muscle surgery on the medial recti consisting in pseudotendon resection and advancement was enough to correct more than 70 prism diopters and to improve the A deduction. Most of cases in our case series had a long, a long pseudotendons with an average length of 10 millimeters. The total amount of surgery for getting a good post-operative alignment was approximately 30% larger on the resected medial rectus than in the expected surgery corresponded, corresponding to the nomograms for primary exotropia at the same deviation quantities. In a very simple and very orientative formula, if the resection was 10 millimeters and you advance two millimeters, the total amount of your resection is 12 millimeter, which is the equivalent of 8.5 millimeters resection found in the nomograms, meaning 30% less. There is a big trap in sleep muscle surgery. Unrecognized, a slippage will lead to a surgery on the antagonist or to a pseudotendon partial resection with severe muscle retraction into the capsule and under correction followed by exotropia reoccurrence. A medial rectus, especially when tight or shortened, can be lost during the surgery. This can happen also in the first hours or days after surgery, resulting in consecutive exotropia with severe AD deficit. 
This is an example, left medial rectus was disinserted second day after surgery for consecutive XT. The muscle was previously resected two times. Probably the new insertion into the sclera was too superficial. The muscle was recovered one week after surgery, easy to be identified because of the suture on the muscle still, and it was correctly reinserted into the sclera. Eight years later, the patient is still orthotropic. The main purpose of surgery in a lost medial rectus muscle is to recover the muscle. If MRI dynamic or dynamic MRI of MRI are available and affordable, please image before. It is advisable to anchor and disinsert first the lateral rectus muscle if tight or to previously inject botulinum toxin uh, in it, decreasing the contractor in the lateral rectus muscle and facilitating the maneuvers for medial rectus recovery. The surgeon assistant needs experience in order to achieve the best exposure in the surgical field without mentioning the already very retracted medial rectus in the capsule. All the maneuvers should be very gentle. If it is a recent lost muscle, look after possible muscle sutures. In a late surgery, don't cut any possible attachments to the sclera of the medial rectus. Isolate any suspected attachments possibly connected with the muscle and follow the pathway until you identify the muscle. In that point, the pseudo tendon becomes thicker and bluish, usually is very far into the deep orbit. If no attachments are identified, use hand-by-hand -hand maneuvers following the medial orbital wall there is possible to recover the muscle. Once identified, we used to apply a non-resorbable 5-0 traction suture into the muscle and then to gradually pull the muscle for a better exposure and mus uh, muscle final anchorage. Reject the non-muscular pseudo tendon if present and reinsert the muscle, but not too close to the limbus. Adjust the lateral rectus muscle new position by using the force duction test. If the medial rectus is not found, we can try a full or partial tendon transfer from the vertical muscles, but I have never done this. Accidents can happen during the surgery of seeking the medial rectus, including to definitive loss of muscle. The lack of experience can make the things to get worse, so in this situation, it's better to stop, to close, and to repeat imaging, preparing a new surgery, maybe asking the help, the help of a more experienced colleague. In conclusion, surgical treatment success in CXT is related to the pre-op and intra-op accurate evaluation of the exodeviation origin and quantity. Recurrent CXT is a signal that we missed something, especially when limited A deduction is observed. Mechanical cause of CXT should be always removed. In most cases, two muscle surgery is necessary and enough. The new, the new muscle insertion target is always a challenge and usual nomograms or suggested suggestions can be used only for orientation. Botulinum toxin is an excellent help in achieving good results. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, uh, Daniela. <clears throat> for your uh, nice uh, overview of uh, this uh, um, problem which can occur either uh, very shortly after surgery or um, in uh, a long term. When I was a fellow a uh, long, long time ago with Gunther von Lorden, uh, he always said, if you find a uh, slit muscle, uh, go for the beef. Uh, and you uh, explained that uh, very uh, uh, clearly that uh, you uh, have to uh, take out the pseudo muscle and uh, go for the uh, for the um, for the real uh, muscle tissue and uh, that you can uh, advance um, i don't see any uh, questions from uh, the audience um, john do you have any questions yeah Daniela, would you generally do a medial rectus advancement and lateral rectus recession on the eye that's divergent, or do you ever do bilateral lateral rectus recessions? Uh, it depends. <laughs> it depends. Uh, you are talking about consecutive X XT or um, generally? Consecutive XT. Consecutive XT. Consecutive XT. Uh, yes. Uh, 
especially if I see a limited day deduction, I suspect that it's possible to be a sleep muscle, muscle there. Or yeah. if I have amblyopia, for instance, if yeah. there is amblyopia, of course, I, I do recess resect procedures uh, or recess advanced, advanced advancing procedures. But um, if I have a good a deduction on both eyes, um, probably I, I intend to use uh, bilateral medial rectus, uh, lateral rectus recession, especially when I have good vision on both eyes. And um, it, this is my choice usually. But I must say my reservation about that is that these patients tend to re-diverge. And so you may want to do a recessive effect on the other eye in 10 or 15 years time if, if they've re-diverged. That's possible, but this thing can happen also if uh, we do recess resect procedures, because now I have more than 20 years. Oh, oh, oh they, they can recur, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. yes. Uh, but uh, sometimes it's very tricky because it can be a, a small slippage or it can be a stress scar. And I think this is the main cause of this reoccurrence, those stretch scars. Uh, patients uh, tend to re-become exotropic, especially because this, this uh, muscle attachment is not um, a good one. Um, actually, the, the stretch card tends to, uh, tends to elongate during the time. So uh, I think it's, it's very important to, to take in consideration this uh, issue th th and this problem. Uh, I saw the most um, ca many cases of reoccurrences and usually uh, you see this pseudo tendon or let's, let's say this part of the stretch car on both sides and then you can explain uh, very well why. So then probably if the deduction is good, it's better to, to go on the letters because there's not so important. If a stretch car happens there, it's not bad <laughs> because... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Daniela. We have